Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. To have a really cool prototype preview for you guys from the brand Alexander James Watches. A little about them, they actually hand assemble these watches in Chicago, Illinois. And essentially, Alexander James started out doing Seiko mods and wanted to bring something of his own to the market. And he absolutely has over the years. Now, in terms of the genre, I think these fall really well into that everyday watch space. And in terms of some key characteristics or design language, you're looking for something that you can wear every day. Of course, you're going to want to find that versatile blend of both sporty and dressy attributes. This is his A3 Omen line. And uh, you can see here the blue snowflake, the adventurine, and the green mother of pearl dial options. So big shout out to Alexander James for sending these three prototypes in so that I could share them with you all. This is the entire line, at least thus far. So a little about this model. So after years of working with the NH series, Alexander James has now begun to use the Miyota 9000 series. With this upgrade, they also decided to upgrade everything else as well uh, in terms of a more premium grade of case and bracelet finishing. And uh, these three different variations are actually limited to 100 units each. So uh, yeah, these things are pretty cool. So these are going to go for 650 $50 direct or you can get them for $6.25 on pre-order or you can use the promo code Omen Bros um, uh, for an additional $25 off of the pre-order pricing which will get you down to about $600 bucks, which I think is definitely pretty competitive. These have a 38 millimeter diameter and only about a 10 millimeter thickness and have a really nice lug to lug of just under 46 millimeters. So really nice well specced, you know, sapphire, all that good stuff. But with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get these pieces in hand, and take a closer look. Okay, so a lot of cool variations, but let's go ahead and start out with this light blue snowflake because this is actually um, a really nice update on their signature snowflake design dials. And you can see this one is more subtle than ever and more refined because everything is just done to a really really nice level there uh, definitely more detailed than ever i would say if i had any critique uh, i think that they should add a clear coat on top to bring out which is something a lot of people don't really notice about these grand seiko dials at least these styles um is it's actually they have like a clear lacquer that goes over top that really brings out a lot of the depth to the dial um and in this case it just looks uh, slightly flatter uh, definitely more crispy and clean so that that definitely might be an aesthetic that a lot of folks gravitate towards but for me personally um you know again it's not like there's anything wrong with this dial but i think it could be taken up an extra notch if they did apply a clear coat but yeah, this thing looks awesome. You can see very Seiko inspired, of course, in terms of the dial layout, um, you know, the split indice at 12. There's definitely a lot of Seiko mod roots here with the Omen line. And you can see very, very nice bracelet. But let's go over some of these dimensions. 38 millimeters in diameter, which is just about perfect. 10 0.4 millimeters thin, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and then 45.7 millimeters lug to lug, guys. So that is really, really wearable. And you can tell that it was a watch guy that got this thing specced out and really well put together. You can see those beautiful chamfers there. Nicely beveled. Great turn down on these still very, very short lugs and a very thin case. So very nice. And some of you are probably noticing there was, well, what's that? All right. So the buckle that's on here, these are again, pre-production prototypes, not the greatest buckle. It's just friction. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that folks didn't think they expect to get this one because yeah, it is a little bulky. It doesn't flow as well. And honestly, the action on it is very, very tight, but that is because this is a prototype. The one you're actually going to get is going to be this bad boy right here. Of course, it's going to be nicely signed, uh, but it does have a very nice milled construction push button there 
The scissor section, of course, is also milled out. And then you do have a nice push button there so you can get your uh, toolless micro adjustments in, which is, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that, uh, which is all the rage. And, and thank you for those of you that are sending me bless yous and gesundheits in the, in the comments. Um, so yeah, very, very cool, guys. And uh, you can see, sorry, my hands are... The cameras wanted to focus on my hands and not this bad boy, but a little tough to work, obviously, um, when there's no links to pull back and forth, but you get the idea, press the button, falls in, um, and then it is ratcheting uh, in terms of get it to shake out uh, when you push it in, I believe you can. Okay, so this is extended, and then you can get the clicks. And then, of course, release it back into the wild. Oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't spend too much time focusing on <laughs> a pre-production clasp. But then yeah, this is going to be the clasp that you actually get, which is cool. Which, you know, we've seen from other manufacturers. But you know what? I think this is one of the better designs out there. I like that when it's fully extended, it doesn't overexpose any type of extension. I like that there's enough clasp to cover the extension itself. So very nice. And again, looking forward to seeing the actual production uh, unit uh, all spec together. But I think it all flows very very nicely um, now you do have a screw down crown which is great which means that 10 atmospheres of water resistance is going to be a lot more confidence inspiring because with that crown screwed down you're definitely good to go in terms of submerging this in water um, you know whether it be water sports or hey you just got a little gritty and grimy and you just want to rinse it off underneath the sink and in terms of movement we talked about a little bit Miota 9039 so no date movement so there's going to be no ghost position on the crown which is great 40 two hour power reserve uh, 4 hertz 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate and they actually do regulate these to plus or minus 10 seconds per day which is quite nice um, so let's go ahead and check out some of the other models guys adventuring here Everybody loves a good adventuring dial, and one of the reasons is because um, in normal lighting, it's going to render as pretty much a nice black dial with maybe a couple of little speckles there at a distance. But once you really get into it, you see just the levels to this, and uh, it's impressive. Check that out. Just beautiful natural mineral there that's going to have all of that. It's like having a little galaxy on your wrist and i i think that's one of the reasons people enjoy it especially because it does add a lot of texture a lot of pop without overdoing it um you know and especially when there's something that can be considered a unisex size here where you can get some appeal to different types of vibes whatever your style is if you want it to be a little bit more subdued and understated but you still want to have something that feels special on the wrist right so i think that's a reason why adventuring has become so popular and you can see the layout here with that adventuring dial Definitely gives it more of, let's say, an explorer style of vibe because of that contrast of light and dark uh, versus here definitely feels a little bit more Grand Seiko-esque, right? Because you have uh, that snowflake style of appearance. Uh, so, you know, that's the really cool thing is although these are all essentially the same watch, the dials really add some fun and some play. And here you go. Speaking of fun and some play, this one is up there. Um, so you actually have a green mother of pearl, but it also has this waffle pattern on there as well, which is really cool. And this definitely screams micro brand to me because it just takes micro brands to be this daring, uh, to really play with different materials, different textures. I like that they didn't just stop with, okay, we'll do a green mother of pearl dial. That waffle pattern, uh, definitely very, very cool. And, you know, it ties into a bit of almost like a turtle type of theme, right? It, almost like a little shell, um, you know, textures. And I don't know, there's something that's fun about that and this is a nice green you can see different lighting different reflecting there it's going to appear very dark uh green kind of forest green and then you get some light on it and it's going to have a really beautiful amount of natural play so i do enjoy that as well 
very very much um, some things to get into it's going to be using bgw9 loom there across all models 20 millimeter lug width so if you're not crazy about this flat link bracelet which i don't see any reason not to be i think it's great uh, also some changes are going to there's going to be a little bit more of a dramatic taper here it's going to go from 20 down to 16 millimeters for production it does have split pin um, connecting uh, system there in terms of the construction uh, which you know is really easy to size which is good you don't have to worry about collars or anything like that or stripping screw pins um, but you know I, I think it's definitely more on the cost saving side um, but hey the good news is uh, you know in terms of precision uh, they're not going to have to have their factory doing something they're not competent in uh, so these are going to work really well from that perspective now uh, again the clasp that you'll be actually receiving is going to be one that's closer to this right here uh, which is a milled push button clasp with that six position of toolless micro adjustment so uh, just to reiterate uh, but with that said let's actually get one of these two of these on wrist and see how they wear Okay, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, I think this wears really, really well. That adventurine really stands out. And of course, it's very desirable these days. And check out that green. I'm not a huge green watch guy, but this one really, really pops. Of course, if I get my wrist a bit too close to the camera lens, guys, you're going to get a bit of perspective distortion. It's going to make the watch seem much larger than it actually is. So what I like to do is keep my wrist nice and low and then just tighten up the frame here uh, so that you guys can still get a detailed look. But just, I would say, at a bit of a truer aspect ratio. So let's check it out. Boom. Whoa. Very, very nice. Look at that. Beautifully centered. Now you're seeing more of the bracelet on the sides. And you can see that it lays really, really nicely. And guys, although I do have a slightly larger than average 7.5 inch wrist, it is quite round and tall. So it's not like I have this big, flat, wide, accommodating wrist. Uh, so I do, you know, pay attention to things like lug to lug um, lengths and just ultimate dimensions and proportions, just as much as those with smaller wrists. And I have to say, this just fits really quite nicely, guys. And of course, not to be left out of the party, this beautiful green dial. Whoa. I like, again, that they didn't just stop with the, ooh, with the mother of pearl. I mean, honestly, there's a part of me that thinks they probably could have just done three different mother of pearl dials. Uh, that's how cool this is. And then just with this waffle pattern, I think uh, that could almost be its own signature look, just so that it wouldn't be as uh, you know, competing as closely to some other brands, you know, especially micro brands that are out there that might be doing anything else, uh, you know, in a similar vein in terms of this kind of everyday dressy feel. This one definitely feels probably the most unique to me. Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite, but again, in terms of just kind of brand iconography, feeling very, very original, I think this does that. It goes very far. Um, and then, of course, I didn't slap it on here, but this dial is also quite nice and this again it's not going to render as clear on camera and that has to do with just the matte finishing unfortunately uh, in terms of really really being able to appreciate that but one that's always going to be a stellar um showstopper is going to be an adventuring dial so very very cool but with that said let's actually get these off the wrist set up for some loom shots the light transition and closing thoughts Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Hey, check it out. So definitely a lot more loom than you need in terms of being that kind of everyday dressy side of a watch. But in terms of that sporty side, I think this really, really delivers. And of course, one thing I like to work in is always going to be a bit of a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it's nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes run are like in less than optimal lighting. My goodness. And these put on a show, whether it be the beautiful flat link bracelet or the actual texturing on the dial, which is going to offer some really nice dynamic light play there, guys, uh, regardless of which dial option you get, because they all do have something programmed in, <laughs> in terms of just a nice bit of dynamic diversity here. So very, very cool. Ooh. That adventuring just, 
it's probably good that it was at the center because it is takes center stage when it comes to light play but i will say that green mother of pearl is not too far off when it comes to uh you know just the dynamic nature you can see very dark almost ooh, almost a black inky dark forest green dial in you know in different lighting conditions and then it just kind of comes to life and gets quite vibrant and reflective and and just hits in different little spots in terms of that mother of pearl texturing underneath the waffle pattern and of course not to be missed is going to be the more subdued snowflake style of dial which does still ring true and, and it's still quite nice i do like that they did go with that hint of that tint of blue i think definitely makes a difference in terms of making sure that the dial doesn't seem too washed out and man all of these especially in this lower lighting you can see that blue loom really just kicks in and looks quite good all right guys so let's get into some closing thoughts here all right now uh, on the wrist really nice dialed in proportions great for versatile everyday wear in terms of model variants definitely check the site links for current options availability and pricing uh, so i mean you might be watching this years from now and these have evolved or you might be watching this while the pre-order is still open so you might be able to still use that omen bros uh, which i will leave in the description and maybe even pin a uh, top comment in there or something like that if i remember to uh, just to make it a little easier for you guys to get this watch or one of these watches the production models was to be more refined and nicer and everything better clasp um of course uh for yeah just 600 bucks which i think is pretty darn good so in terms of comparable models guys yes in the 600 dollars price range the competition among fellow micro brands is tougher than ever but i do think the a3 omen does do enough to earn a place in you know in terms of your consideration um which, yeah, again, it's something to consider. I never try to sell anybody anything. But for me, I know I understand kind of the demographic and, and hunting for watches and trying to find that cool kind of go anywhere, do anything, but then add some pizzazz, add some, you know, some flavor to it. I, I totally get that. And this really speaks to me, right? Of course, uh, if you're big on brand names, this probably isn't the type of watch for you. But if you're somebody that just wants something very, very unique and, you know, look forward to telling the story that kind of goes with it i think that these are absolutely great so for me guys bottom line i love to see brands evolve and grow and i really like what alexander james is doing here the a3 omen is raising the bar for the brand uh flat out i mean and the other models he had before were still very very cool they definitely were more in that kind of seiko mod vibe though here you have something that feels like it's very independent and stands on its own and while many competitors are racing to the bottom looking for you know kind of to offer bland watches with the tallest spec sheets uh, at the lowest price when i say bland i mean yeah very homage based right unoriginal not taking any risks which here you're seeing a lot of risks taken and you might see some different elements that are woven together i will say that i think they're woven together nicely to make it still feel quite fresh um, alexander james is still focused on constant improvements with each new iteration further developing his own signature design aesthetic and i like where it's gotten so far and i look forward to seeing where it goes next guys so uh, let me know what you guys all think down in the comments below if you like the video please do it like and if you're already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys hey.